much of this is just a function of age. The focus is almost entirely on issues relating to America and the Soviet Union, so important domestic matters are falling behind. <laughs> What do you suggest I do? Well, as sovereign, of course, there is nothing you can do from a constitutional standpoint. But as a friend, as Albert Windsor, you are the one person I can think of to whom he might listen. Well, that is where we run into difficulties, I'm afraid. But I, I no longer am. Albert Windsor. That person was uh, murdered by his elder brother when he abdicated. And, of course, Albert Windsor would dearly love to say to his old friend Winston Churchill, take a step back, mm, put your feet up, let the younger generation have a go. <laughs> but he is no longer with us, and that void has been filled by George VI, who, it turns out, is quite the stickler. And <clears throat> he would no more allow the sovereign to interfere with the prime minister than stand for office himself. Even when it's in the national interest, sir? Huh? The national interests or Anthony Eden's interests. And I agreed to grant you an audience. Not to hear your grievances about Mr. Churchill, but to communicate mine about you. Sir? The PM will step down in time. And until then, as sovereign, I do have the right to be consulted, to encourage, to warn. It is better to be patient get what you desire in the right time. And no high office thrust upon you when you are not ready. I speak from personal experience. Foreign Secretary. Your Majesty. Sir. Shall we begin to walk back, sir? <laughs>